Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Maddles and this is another StarCraft 2 England cast. Now today guys, I've got a ladder game, it is between Goody the red Terran player in the lower left position, who's up against Toxic the blue Protoss player in the top right. The map is in Tomb Valley and well guys, it is a PVT and it should be awesome. Toxic cast loads of his games, Goody cast loads of his games and well, this should be sweet. So, no predictions on who's going to win. It could literally go either way right now. Um, and it should be fun. I mean, obviously, ladder games are always a bit fun because in, like, a best of three, best of five, or whatever, there's a psychological aspect of what your opponent's done before, how you've reacted before, how they're playing, etc. Yeah. In a best of one, it's <laughs> you just don't know. They could, they could be just in a mood where they're going to proxy two racks you, or they could be in a mood where they're going to go for a super long macro game, and you don't really know until you get in it, and you really play it out. So that can be really, really fun, and it does add a little bit more unpredictability to this match, in my opinion, which can make it more fun. Now, I'm just looking around this map. What are the key things we need to know? Well, natural base, not too hard to take. It's got a nice ramp, which can be defended quite comfortably, and should see relatively fast expansions out of both players. Um, third base, again, quite easy to defend, especially once these rocks are taken out, and for both Protoss and Terran, it's not too bad. For Terran, it's a really nice position to try and defend. Actually, for both of them, it's quite nice to defend, because you just stick your units where the rocks are, basically, and if they try and go in your natural, you're like, nope, and if they try and go in your third, you're like, nope. It's simple. So, obviously, looking around, Toxic may be going for a Nexus first, um, which is very, 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 very brave, because he hasn't even scouted, he has no idea what his opponent is doing, it's not forced cross spawn, so there's lots of reasons things could go terribly, terribly wrong for him. Goody, though, gonna go and scout down here, and um, for those of you who don't know, this is, I'm 99% sure, an impossible spawn location on this map. I know it is on all of the tournament versions of the map, but I'm not sure if it is on the ladder. Now I'm doubting myself hugely, but I'm fairly sure you can't spawn um, on the same level. I think you can only spawn either vertically or diagonally, not horizontally. But I could be wrong. But I'm fairly sure I'm not. But anyway, looking at the map, we do of course have the first gas coming down now for the Protoss player. It was a one Rax command center of goodies, so both these players really, really going for the mid game, the economy, and really just should be in store for some good stuff. So let me say, guys, um, while we have this kind of little filler space, if you like my casts, then please do subscribe. I get new top games up daily. Let your friends know about them because that would just be awesome and like the video and all that sort of shenanigans. Leave a cool comment. But the thing I'm really trying to push at the moment is if you've got any games, be it, uh, be it whether you're a Grandmaster player or a Bronze League or anything like that, and you think they're an awesome game that deserve to get cast, then send them to se2england at hotmail.co.uk because I am trying to cast more subscriber games and if they're lower levels I'll give you some hints, tips and basically ways you can improve. If they're higher levels I'll shout cast them all. Now Goody is going for the absolutely incredible one racks command center command center build because why not just get loads of command centers and the big advantage for him on this map is see these they're rocks see this this is a potential base and see this command center thingy being built they can fly so he's just gonna lift it come over here and be like lol i got a base where you don't expect it and that's gonna put him in a great spot basically so Big win there for the Terran out there. Now, obviously Toxic, he's got his natural base up. He's chrono boosting them probes out. He's chrono boosting out also warp gate tech. He's got the double gateway, so he can go a bit aggressive should he want to, but a bunker coming down here for goody puts him in a good spot. So, obviously that's nice and defensive. Should he scout anything super scary, which hopefully he won't, then he can always chuck down some more bunkers and be completely safe still. But I don't think we're going to see too much aggression early on because there's a robotic facility coming down and that's going to take quite a long time to come out. If you were going to put on more aggression, you, especially really, really early or quickly, you wouldn't necessarily get that down quite so soon. This is gearing up more towards a kind of 11, 12 minute push. And again, that's a nice push timing. It can be very, very strong, but Goody should be in a better spot to defend that. He's getting his tech lab down. The important upgrade, the real critical upgrade, assuming that Goody's going for MMM, is that you've got to, absolutely got to have Stim out quickly because that is how you deal with those gateway units and it really forces the Protoss player to get up either Colossus or High Templar with Storm, preferably both in the late game to deal with the infantry ball and that can be awkward. Anyway, Goody, he's taking his third base now, he's in an amazing spot basically, things couldn't be going much better for him. He's now switching over um, 
his factory to a tech lab actually. That's quite surprising. He's got both the barracks and the factory though. He's getting a tank down and also getting siege mode. So again, not that common you see siege tanks in TVP. And they they aren't hugely featured usually I mean typically you get Marines mod as medevacs as the staple of everything so I'll be interested to see how this is used it could just be for a more defensive position because obviously tanks are pretty good defensive the reason they're not super great is well just because the Protoss player has a lot of tools to really negate the effect of siege tanks quite effectively ranging from blink stalkers where you can just blink straight into them in close range and snipe them off to obviously more things like the Colossus with extended thermal lance has great range on them and obviously all the way down to just far simpler things like DTs can really really put an end to that just with a nice little stealth in an attack so again obviously Immortals as well absolutely fantastic against siege tanks because of their hardened shield great work actually by Toxic with these pylons I don't think I've said enough about these just spreading out proxy pylons everywhere for war pins and just general aggression he's got that observer coming in stalker going to check on the third but there is a third base it's just not there it's hidden up here which of course is very very nice we've got the tank down we've got the missile tower down now ready for the detection to make sure no dts are creeping in your base we've got now what four gateways up a fifth gateway on the way the extended thermal lance coming down um a war prism coming down as well but the first colossus is out so i mean a little part of me hopes that colossus is going to be picked up by the war prism and we're going to see Colossus drop because that would just be absolutely ridiculously cool. But I don't think it's too likely. We've got more barracks coming down at the moment. Still more tanks coming out as well, which is quite interesting. The first starport down there, the reactor down there. So we are starting to see some more Marines and Marauders come out. But really, most of this army is made up at the moment of those two tanks and not much else. We do see the Observer, though, is going to come and scout the hidden base. That's always bad times because now Toxic is completely aware of where that is. He's going to come and pick up those rocks at his earliest convenience. Maybe even just going to drop the Zealots in there. And then there's no way for the SCVs to run because they're blocked in by rocks. Which, as much as they're going to defend you, they're also going to kill you. We've got the Colossus coming over as well. The Colossus can, of course, just cliff walk up here and kill everything. But this is bad times for Goody. He's going to be forced to lift, but he's going to lose all of this, which is a lot of mules. It's a lot of, it's a lot of SCVs as well. There is an awful lot of mules going to get picked up here, which is a massive, massive loss for Goody. And I shouldn't laugh, but it's kind of unfortunate, yet ironic at the same time that the hidden base gets scouted and dies. It's the risk you take every time you get a hidden base, though. So, to be fair, there's ways to avoid it, but he's done pretty well. He got a good amount of mining out of there, so... Um, well, a very good amount of mining out there actually, so that is pretty good. He's just putting it back now. He can go and retake it whenever he wants to. But a good little win for Toxic. He managed to pick off 12 workers and has leveled out the work account now, which of course is very, very nice. He's take his own third base is now just up. He's picking off those rocks in the middle. The class is helping it there. Of course, we do still have the drop there. We've got the center of the map taken very, very effectively by Toxic at the moment. He's got all of the map dominance. He's got all the scouting information. He's seen everything coming down. I need to be careful that missile tower. It's the only thing. But with the observer placement, we'll see this army moving out. He's going to be in a great spot ready to really start crushing it. He's pulling back his own army as well. This is the safest place to be because obviously you can see... You can still go the watchtower for the detection. But obviously you're not concerned because the brush is there. So scans are needed to see in there. But that's all fine. Allowing Goody to move across the map. Positioning his own army in a good spot. Needs to be careful of the siege tanks though because they do deal an awful lot of damage. Upgrade wise 2-1 on the way out. That's compared to 1-0 and 0-0 for the Terran. The first Vikings on their way. Some tanks sieging up, so that's going to force the Colossus back for the moment. The War Prism gets picked up incredibly quickly, and now it's really just a case of getting in a nice defensive position here for the Protoss. If, it, if the defense is good, then it should be fine, but of course the leapfrogging tanks, if they're allowed to get in a good position, they can then start causing some problems just due to the sheer amount of damage they can do. And as you can see here, big damage already being done to the Protoss army. One of the Colossus takes a lot of fire couple more volleys off those vikings and it will fall and once you're down to solve one colossus the damage just really isn't enough to do that much and well here we go we've got a good engagement coming in of course the colossus it being a bit of a pain that needs to get focused down one falls that is a big big win for a goodie there but of course toxic is able to shut down this push quite effectively still and he's picking up all the medevacs with the tanks down and in terms of cost effectiveness i'd say that's yeah it does go in toxic's favor there but of course the third base does get picked off here with just a handful of units a lot of probes picked off as well 
from the worker kill count. Pretty low. We're trying to snipe off that Colossus. Doesn't manage to do it, but does get it down to th uh, three quarters health, which, of course, is a nice little win. Meanwhile, the fourth or third base taken here. Of course, the fourth orbiter command is still sitting in a nice position. In terms of the worker count, 60 to 47 in Goody's favor now. So he is pulling very, very far ahead in terms of the income. But the problem is he's lost most of his army here as well. So he's a good, what, nearly 30-ish army supply behind. And obviously, the second Colossus on the field now, this is a great spot to be in. There's no tanks for the added defense either. Upgrade-wise, it's 1-1 one, one against 2-1, one, or 1-2 one, rather, which obviously puts him in a great spot. And this force is going to be quite dominating. This third base could be at a lot of risk, especially if a tight choke like that is able to get utilized by Toxic in the attack. And it seems that it's going to be. He does some good damage. Both the Colossus stay up, which of course is a big win. The Viking gets picked off as well. And the Colossus really are the damage dealers here. They are needed to pick off this infantry. A warp in from one of those four pylons does go down. And the Colossus was left on its own, which is of course not what you want to see. But here we see Toxic with a great counter-attack in the moment. The force field doesn't quite block off all the SCVs from running away. The Stalkers should be able to pick off that orbital command though with just a couple more volleys. It's getting exceptionally low on health and will definitely go down now, which is a big win as well. So really they both traded their third bases. They both traded quite a lot of workers, but Toxic has now killed more and leveled out the worker count yet again. So this is a two and throw game. The important thing though, obviously, is that Toxic's got away with all of his army intact, whereas Goody lost all of his army when he came down there. And now you can see that Goody losing about twice as many resources of his rather than his opponent. So obviously retaking this third base needs to start thinking about what he's doing. We've got some photon cannons coming down just again trick me once, shame on you, trick me twice, shame on me. So really defending off this third base, making sure just a small cluster of infantry can't pick it off too quickly. We've got Storm coming down, which is great. We've got the plus two Protoss ground weapons as well as the plus one shields, which is a great upgrade. We've got the two two infantry weapons coming down for top for Goody at the moment rather. No ship weapons, which is the only thing I'd like to see. Getting down the Ghost Academy Again, that's just for the EMPs and the snipes ready to deal with those high Templars. So great play there. Looking around, we've got even more forward pylon coming down. And I've got to say, Toxic's pylon placement is absolutely beautiful. He's just chucking them down everywhere. He's keeping units at every kind of expansion location, just keeping an eye on what could be coming down. He's taking his fourth base as well. So Toxic, I'd definitely say, is really the more dominant player in this match at the moment. Goody, though... He's doing some good aggression, and I like the multi prong attack that he went for, which did lose him all of his army, but he did pick off the third, and if he'd held his own third, he would have been in a great spot right now, because he was a long way ahead in terms of the worker count. But in terms of the worker count now, Goody's still ahead by kind of two workers-ish, which when you factor in mules, means that his economy will be better. He's about mining roughly about 500 more minerals a minute than his opponent. A storm goes down, and that was more of a defensive storm as opposed to trying to do damage, just forces the Terran army back from the moment. And, well, looking up here, lots more gateways being added on. We've got the shield upgrade nearly coming through. 2-2 two -two upgrades nearly done, so I'm surprised Goody not actually just waiting for those 2-2 two -two upgrades to finish. He's got the Mobius reactor coming down as well now. The A couple of Immortals coming out. He's obviously toxic getting out the plus 3 ground weapons, uh, ground armor rather, the plus 1 shields. So he's currently at 2-2. Two -two. We'll be at 2-2-1 two -two shortly. That's compared to what will be 2-2 two -two very shortly as well. So Armor, slight upgrade advantage to Toxic, but not by a huge amount, to be honest. He's starting the plus three ground weapons as well now, so that's good. That will put him in a nice position should he get some good Chrono Boots out. He's getting some more High Templar out at the moment. Of course, those Storm's going to be good. A small little cluster of infantry coming up towards that fourth base. Might try and pick that off, but he's going to get cut off by the main force from Toxic here. So that could be a couple of units getting killed for nothing, which they do manage to get one Marauder, one Marine, which you, you can't say anything bad about. Looking here, the Command Center coming down, so... Perhaps going to try and take a fourth base, the centre one, the only one really available. Pulling back all of Goody's army at the moment. The Protoss army moving forward again, so this is kind of the to and throw in terms of the map control. It's like, well, I'm going to move back, I'll move forward. I want to be dominant in where I've gone. I have to say, that's the other thing that Toxic's doing amazingly. So if we look at his vision, just look at how much of the map he can see compared to that of... Look at how shielded Goody's video, uh, video, his vision is. So obviously that is a big advantage. The more of the map you can see, the less surprised you are by enemy movements or drops or basically you don't get surprised and su surprises tend to make you lose games so obviously great play scans going off though keeping an eye on where all this movement's going and the viking being utilized incredibly well will they manage to pick off a colossus very very nearly a storm not on the money at all there but wow 
That was a nice little play by Goody. And if he can utilize this space some more, he'll be in a great spot. Obviously, by flying over this um, dead ground here, there's no way that Toxic can really pick off those Vikings. He's in a safe position at the moment. Uh, we do see a couple of Vikings get picked off. And obviously, the Colossus are trying to get defended. The thing I really like about Toxic is he's not over committing to the Colossi. He's got three of those out, seven High Templar. That's because, really, the High Templar, the Storms deal a really, really high DPS. Whereas, of course, the Colossus deal more sustained damage. And if you have too many Colossus, then it can run into some problems. And basically, I like this mixture of units a lot more. And seeing here, we've got, of course, Toxic King down his fifth base. We've got the fourth base down for Goody, though. So Toxic is consistently staying a base above that of his opponent. He's one worker ahead, but of course mules mean that Goody should have the better income. He's going to have less gas income though, purely because he's on three bases as opposed to four. Planetary Fortress at this central base. I think that's a good move. It just makes it a little bit more secure. Both players relatively defensive at the moment. We've got another starport coming down. The level two ship weapons for the Terran, as well as the personal cloaking, the 3 3 upgrades. 3 3 already done for Toxic. He's getting the plus two Protoss shield upgrade as well. He's getting out the Gravatic boosters and, well, both these players are actually really quite turtling hard now. I mean, Toxic is pushing forward, but that's much more to maintain the map dominance as opposed to trying to find a good angle to attack because neither player really wants to push in at the moment because they are 200 to 200. Toxic with a much bigger bank though, so he can resupply quickly should he need to. It looks like the Zealot is going to check around for any more bases. He's in a nice spot having this fifth base up. That's definitely going to help him. And this is turning into really the real late game part of PBT which can be quite difficult because both players do end up with this quite death ballist force and I mean a lot of the micro is going to come down to how well the storms come off and how well the EMPs go off as well so I'm very very interested to see how that's played out and um, really toxic just trying to spend lots of his money by building apparently a wall of photon cannons because he's seen those Zerg players to get the spine caller walls and thought they are so damn good I want some too and uh, well good storm coming off there those Vikings need to be careful if they start taking too much damage early on it can run into some problems but the ghosts are full once that personal cloaking field's done it could run into some problems as well that sentry gets picked up very quickly a well, a single EMP goes off. I don't think he managed to get any high tempo though, which of course is what you really want to try and hit. We do see a scan go off as well now, and for the moment, Toxic, he is losing some stuff. He's still engaging quite a lot more cost effectively though, compared to Goody. And well, here we go. We've got some feedbacks going down, but there's just so many ghosts there at the moment. We should see an awful lot of high tempo picked off fairly quickly now. Some storms going down, but the ghosts are really doing a nice job of trying to avoid them and well we're seeing some problems we're seeing a lot of those high templar get picked up so goody with some good engagements he's moving in he's forcing this protoss army back incredibly fast and a lot of those high templar are getting picked up as well they do get emp so they've got no energy at all a lot of the vikings are getting taken down though though and well seeing here the high templar they're getting picked up they are of course expensive units one does manage to survive though purely just because Goody is running back. He sees this kind of possible counter-attack coming in. A storm goes down on a lot of the Terran infantry, and that is going to really start hurting. Now, mass storms on everything, and yeah, that did huge amounts of damage. Toxic in a relatively nice spot, but these pylons are now going to get revealed and will get picked off fairly soon. Looking at the center of the map, though, Toxic definitely has the map control, and I'm really quite surprised he's not expanding more because he's got enough money to. Um, obviously, his army's pretty much maxed out. I'm surprised he hasn't taken this space, for example, because with these photon cannons, it's very, very safe. He could take a lot more bases should he want to. And that would obviously give him the gas income and really secure his late game position. The double Colossus production going to really, really help. In terms of the High Templar count, 10 already on the field. This is just really, really nice play by both these players. Toxic, I, I'd still say he's in the lead, but that last engagement wasn't as cost effective as some have been. So, again, they're engaging pretty equally at the moment. But here comes the... Protoss army around the side, but of course that sensor tower really helping Goody to position his army exactly where it needs to be. We do have the Viking coming in. They're going to try and get a couple of hits off, but they do go straight into a storm, and a great blink fall by those Stalkers managed to pick off the Vikings, and now both these players must be getting really, really tense at this point. I'm sure everyone watching who plays You've, you've been in situations like this where you've got everything you want. You've got all the units you want, you've got all the bases you want, but you just don't want to engage the opponent because they've got all the units they want, they've got all the things you don't want them to have, basically. And that can make it very tense, it can make it very stressful. But it's all about positioning now and the better army engagement. So both players are really aiming to force their opponents into chokes while they themselves have got that big, big attack arc to use. Now, a good storm goes down, and so many Vikings getting picked off here, actually. And a good pull back using the storms to allow the retreat. And, well, that's an absolutely fantastic engagement there for Toxic, just dragging all of the Terran army 
back through all of those storms. The Viking count now incredibly low. Only five Vikings on the field to try and deal with six Colossi. And this should allow Toxic to really go for it. And I'm surprised he's not being more aggressive now because he's definitely got the advantage. He's got the plus three shield upgrade on the way as well now. So his units are going to be very, very strong indeed. We've got some, wow, some high Templars from behind. Get some amazing storms off. And this could very well be it. The Colossus coming in, absolutely melting everything. The Vikings are landing for some reason, but the storm is coming down way too effectively. And there is the GG well played. And I've got to say there, Toxic, that, those High Templar from behind were absolutely incredible. They were an inspired move. And that was just absolutely an amazing engagement and a game-winning one, as we saw. So anyway, guys, if you did enjoy the cast, please subscribe, leave a cool comment, and like the video. Tell your friends as well, that would be awesome. But most importantly, I hope you did enjoy it. And yeah, I'll catch you tomorrow for yet another new game. But if you can't wait that long, flick over to my channel. And I'm sure there's lots of StarCraft on there that you haven't seen before. So thank you very much for watching and bye for now.